There's this expression that's been stuck in my head for the last couple of years, and it's you're all in, in life, whether you like it or not. Whatever you're doing right now is the most important thing that you could be doing. And what I mean by that is life is extremely limited. You have a limited amount of time in life. And whatever you choose to do at any particular moment, you are spending your most valued resource on. So whether you're watching this video or exercising at work, spending time with your family, with your girlfriend, your boyfriend, whatever, in that moment, that is the most important thing you are doing. And you're all in. Whether you like it or not, you have chosen to be all in in that particular moment. And there's many folk out there that aren't quite happy with their life at this particular moment in time. And a thought experiment comes to mind when I think of this. And it's the concept of eternal return. And basically what this means is when the universe ends, it will repeat itself. So everything that you've done and everything that you will do, you will experience as an eternal loop. The choices you take, the actions of others against you, everything that has happened and will happen in your life is a repeating cycle and will repeat every single cycle. And the question that they pose in this thought experiment is, would you be okay with that? And I think this is an important question to ask because it makes you reconsider the things in your life very specifically down to the most minute detail. Because if you're not happy with how your life is going, the question to ask is, why? And while we could turn around and say external factors like, oh, these people are mean to me, or I have a shit job, or I'm stuck in debt, or something like that. The next question is, okay, what could you do to make it a worthwhile life? And you see, the thing is, we already know what we could do to make our lives worth living and to make our lives better, to improve our lives. But we feel like we are stuck, that we aren't able to progress, or that we've hit a plateau, or we have too many responsibilities, or that there's too many outside factors working against us. But in reality, a lot of those factors are actually excuses for ourselves. Like, for example, if you have chronic back pain from sitting at a desk all day, or you barely have enough money to pay the bills. You know exactly how and what to do in order to improve that. You know, it could be paying off your debts a little bit every month, a little bit at a time, working on the smaller ones or the bigger ones over time. It could be taking more hours at work. It could be selling your car and taking public transport. It could be making your life a little bit more difficult in the moment in order to have a much more worthwhile life later on down the line because all progress requires a little bit of sacrifice and usually it's the the little creature comforts that we don't want to sacrifice for the the start of our progress it's like when you start working out you will feel a lot of pain start doing a 10 push-ups a day your shoulders and your back and your arm are going to be in agony for the first couple of weeks and then you're able to do 15 then you're able to do 20 then 30, then 40, then 50, all the way up to 100, and you feel stronger. Your body noticeably changes, your, your mental aptitude for things changes as well, you become more sharp and more aware. And I know in a lot of the examples I give for the my videos lately, it's been like exercise and just taking care of yourself. But I guess what I'm trying to say is, we already know where we will end up if we don't start doing the things that we know we should do in order to improve our situation. We know the things that we need to do to break the cycle so that the rest of our life is good or productive and worthwhile and meaningful. But there's this, this fear, this fear of change, this fear of sacrifice. We know rightly what we need to do. And to prove a point, there's a, there's a thought experiment, another thought experiment by Jordan Peterson. And basically it goes like this. Imagine yourself in five years if everything in your life went well. Write it all down, visualize it, and then imagine the complete opposite. If everything went wrong. And you know that if you continue life that the way you're going, with everything going wrong, 
that that's where you'll end up. But if you knew that this life was a cycle, it would make it so much easier for you to decide, okay, I want it to be the good side of the cycle. I want it to be the good experience for the rest of time. As I said, we know what we need to do in order to improve our situations, to improve our life, but we choose not to. And it is a choice. Like, yes, there are certain things in life that we can't choose, certain actions that happen to us, certain experiences we experience, but we do need to take responsibility for our own selves, for our own actions, how we react to things, how we experience things, even how we think about things. And whether the, the concept of eternal return is true or not, what is true is you are all in right now, whether you like it or not. And that in and of itself should be motivation enough to turn your life into somewhat of a worthwhile existence. I'm not saying you have to go out and make a million dollars a year or something, but to enjoy it, to go to bed at the end of the night with a smile on your face and say, this was a good day. Tomorrow's going to be a good day too. To have people that you care about and that care about you. To be a, a good influence on others. To be kind within reason. Generous within reason. To be honest. And to have honesty towards you. I don't know about you, but I'd much rather have the better experience of the loop. And sacrifice whatever I must in order to attain that. Within reason, of course. <laughs>